video start. I have a whole lot of things to talk about. Uh, I have quite a few uh, Super Nintendo games. I forgot to start camera, camera start. Hello. Uh, quite a few things to talk about. Uh, I have a few different apps. Here's one. Uh, I don't know, tech support stuff. So, I can't uninstall apps from that screen. I have to press this button at the bottom right where it says apps. And then, uh, I have way too many of these. Um, I needed one that would work with my camera. Do I want to install an app? Okay. It's like, it's like a th uh, thousand, hundred thousand bytes, a uh, thousand kilobytes or whatever, like one megabyte per app. Whereas Facebook, after a month or so, it goes from like 50 megabytes to like half a gigabyte to a gigabyte. So every once in a while, I have to uh, uninstall and reinstall Facebook even. And if I want to create a new page, I only have two. Here's one page there, one page here. Uh, I can put... Want to see it there? There's not enough room here in this folder. Looks like my screen's crashing already. Uh, I My hair looks alright, so I don't want to disengage the camera. Occasionally, uh, like... The, uh, up? So, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. not intuitive. The computers aren't very intuitive anyways. Um, okay. Wow. Well, I have a memo. I'll just go to the memo first. Um, I can't remember why I wrote this memo. Uh, it was some sort of pressing matter yesterday on this time. Um, after uh, Kwame Brown uh, live stream, and uh, here's the link to his uh, video from yesterday. So now, whatever memos I had before that are going to be there. Um, okay, so a lot of these things uh, require much context and explanation, a whole lot. Uh, let me explain this one first. Um, oh, it's Richard Sherman, yeah. I saw the video today, I thought it was fabricated. News yesterday um, was my initial reaction, people in uh, Common Brown in, I'll just say in your uh, comment section, we're saying how the incident was in unfolding, and my first thought was uh, a person who's uh, similar in uh, character to Kwame Brown. Uh, he he's it's hard to put into words. He's the first um, one of the first professional sports players to create his own sort of sports commentary station or channel. Uh, to compete with ESPN that's now owned by Disney and he's just on YouTube. He did it all himself. Um, there were a few people who uh, had attempted that before and my initial reaction after seeing uh, I started writing this after I saw that uh, the same year that I was born uh, Richard Sherman was also born and not only that, he he was on the, he's still in the league and then at FL as a free agent, and he's uh, a former uh, teammate of someone who I uh, grew up with. That if I post this on Facebook, everyone would already know who I'm talking about. On uh, or at least whatever people from my high school class. Um, I uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to say. What what I was thinking, what I wasn't planning on mentioning, is like what I'm doing now is I'm just like leaning on a chair next to a barbecue. And I first had the idea when I was in you know second grade, whatever. I was uh, like one of the first times that I really got in trouble was from leaning back in my chair in class. I don't know. It was just uh, that was the same class. A lot of big news events happen. Uh, people my age, uh, and class of, I was a class of 2006, graduate high school, um, class of 2006,
class of uh, 2010, graduate college with a bachelor's degree. Um, anyways, uh, so um, some people, not anyone mentioned on here, um, YouTube channel uh, Chris, uh, he is Italian. He's from Sicily, like Christopher Columbus, and he has the same first name. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I think one of the last videos on my channel was addressed to him, uh, and it was mentioning uh, Christopher Pyle, uh, A.K.A. Gomer Pyle. I don't know. I'm not going to show the video to re-explain what I explained there. I think that's in one of my memos. Oh, this was. Um, mentions in a video uh, on a different channel, Brian Glaze channel. Uh, I, I sent a lot of uh, song lyrics into the video premiere live chat and his very next video he mentioned uh, tons of songs in his videos and I, I don't think anyone else noticed it so I just wrote them down here. Um, you know he was saying stuff like he had to be the crash test dummy or he was the crash test dummy so that we don't have to be that way and stuff like that um and here here was uh here's what i'm talking about that's brian glaze channel uh i don't know who i was sending that to unidentified chris that's the one that's the video that i made so here's what we were talking about here's chris pile and stuff um what my the last couple of days what i was going to do until this pressing matter of uh, rich sherman So here we can see that Gomer Pyle paved the way in the culture previously with the, in the red line uh, starting in around 1960 when Christopher Pyle had just joined the military and became a captain and academy professor of military intelligence. They had a computers with something called teletype apps or, or teletypers where um, they would take in phone calls and it would automatically be generated into text form and printed out and typed automatically uh, similar to how voice to text works or like closed captions that are auto generated on YouTube and on Facebook now at least on live videos so it's completely apparent from 1950 to modern times how Christopher Pyle was sort of piled on with this Gomer Pyle stuff because we can see when the decline of Gomer Pyle happened in the mid 60s that was the rise of Chris and then the pile on happened right here when Gomer Pyle, Pyle regained his popularity up into the peak right here at, you know, in the mid aughts or whenever that is uh, so in my memo I had mentioned Houdini and so what I was going to try to very briefly make like a brief there's something in intelligence, a term called a brief. It's like a briefing summary or synopsis or a plot. Uh, sort of like on Wikipedia, like, you know, people are always hearing about certain movies and I, for one, don't want to watch these movies at all. I despise Hollywood and most of what it stands for. Um, that's not just me. Uh, there's not a whole lot of, you know, most people are head over heels for Hollywood. Anyways. Um, Okay, um, I, I don't want to talk about Hollywood, um, so, well, what I, was I, I'm going to re-engage the camera, what I just noticed is that, it takes own, uh, stuff to, takes a lot of processing power to, um, uh, engage a camera, whether it be a selfie or something like that, I'm going to, just, so, Instead of that, I just power up the screen and then the black reflection, it's just a mirror. I can, so I can fix my hair or do whatever that way. So I would like that. Anyways, uh, let me go to the earliest mentions of Houdini. And I figured the transcript that I would uh, briefly like summarize and off the top of my head, you know, reading it on Wikipedia, stuff like that. Um, before these reaction videos had become as popular as they are today, uh, one of my ideas for having a big YouTube channel was um, I would just copy and paste uh, Wikipedia plots and turn them into text form 
uh, that would just sort of unfold through a video. <clears throat> I have one, a prototype, on one of my channels, and it wasn't spoken at all. It was just, it was even like a typewriter font and everything like that. Uh, since then, in the last couple of years, I actually write stuff on my screen with just not even a, using a stylus on the touch screen, even though I had a stylus on, and took a lot of notes and studying uh, university lectures and stuff that way instead of uh, traditional, just, uh, anyways, um, hmm. so I thought it'd be a lot, um, more meaningful if I read through the transcripts over here, uh, and, uh, for some reason I can't seem to find, uh, the things that I'm looking for. Let me press the back button once, and click that button instead. Oh, I'm searching the wrong term. I remember the term now. The thing is, is like in these uh, theaters of uh, committees and stuff, it's like these people are generally curious about these things. Like they're not just like questioning for the sake of it. Like they really want to know, like, uh, is what I've noticed. this one. No, that's different. Oh, wow, that's FTC from 1935. Um. Wow, there's not, not a whole lot here. I'll have to manually find this. Let me, let me try, uh, Houdini. It's just typed, uh, or wh whatever, it's just, uh, hmm. I'll have to manually search that, that's my memo. Let me show who else I'm going to mention, um, Richard's Almanac. That's, uh, one of my, uh, my 10th grade grandfathers from Eng England and one of the earliest founders of Massachusetts Bay Colony in the, around 1630. That's even before 1800 here at the beginning of that. Um, in my opinion, he was uh, Poor Richard from Poor Richard's Almanac. See how it's not very, uh, it's not nearly as famous as it ever was. Um, it'd be in interesting to see how my fifth cousin, five times removed, Henry David Thoreau, uh, we have a we share our same grandfather, um, and his last name is spelled T R O R O, and uh, what you would call it? Interesting. Yeah, that's very interesting to see. Um, okay, so blue this is Richard, and red. So he completely dwarfed that whole thing. So that's my cousin. Um, those. I see a similarity here. There's something, there's some meaning there. Um, just for the heck of it, I'm going to search uh, Richard Church. Just the two names of uh, Rich Rich or Rich Richard or whatever. So, see, no one after night who wasn't conscious enough to write a book in 1955 since then would know who I'm talking about. So it's interesting to see in 1919, in between the time of the Great Depression, there was a sharp, steep rise. Uh, let me compare that with Henry David Thoreau. The idea is like the stuff from the past and the stuff that people did 100 and 200 years ago increasingly affects our current modern world even more. Uh, you know, founding fathers, Ben Franklin is the one who wrote Poor Richard's Almanac. Um, since I made a video about it, uh, the page has been taken down on Wiki Ancestry or something like that. Let me go back and search. It's in this video right here on my YouTube channel.
updated my channel name. I was going to add Son of John, David Lovett's Son of John. Definitely check out uh, John Lovett's um, first appearance on the Johnny Carson show, where, I don't know, it's funny, he just makes up a bunch of stuff. Also, on Saturday Night Live, he has some good stuff. So, in my opinion, I don't know, it's hard to explain. Uh, it's It sounds, I, you know, I wouldn't recommend repeating what I say, but it's like, it's almost like I'm an illegitimate child of uh, Madonna Ciccone, a musician, and John Lovett. It's, it's like, so no matter what I do, like, it's funny or something. So, that's just how I see myself, or whatever. So, B.F. Skinner, um, psychologist, uh, very influential. You know, he wrote Walden 3 and interviewed my cousin who had, you know, he attended Harvard over a hundred years before. Um, I always forget his name. I just saw it and I've already forgotten. His name is, um, whatever his name is. So he, he's comparable to, so here, here's Richard Church right here. In this part of the video. <clears throat> so the joke that I thought of today was, uh, I think a lot of people have forgotten about uh, Samuel L. Jackson's Snakes on a Plane movie. And it's like, here's a picture of my family tree. Here is Thoreau. And his name in a different language means bull. And so, like, if I was had a reaction here, if like this was like a thought bubble, I'd be thinking, like, can someone help me? He's already five times removed. Because it's all, he, he and all his siblings never had any families of their own uh, to speak of and so their whole genealogy was just stopped right there um, so the only people to inherit whatever legacy that they did have are going to be his cousins like me anyways um, so the idea is the quote the most well known quote from Snakes on a Plane movie like can someone help me remove this bull from my family tree and, uh, I don't know, I thought of that today. And, like, that's the main reason I'm recording this uh, video. So there's Richard Church. There was a link to him. And I think it's in here. Um, and here's where the split happens. Uh, you know, here's Henry David's throw side. And here's uh, my side. Anyway, so, um... Another thing that's interesting about this video is Rosa Parks herself is interviewed uh, and interviews my cousin, at least someone acting like him. Here's what he looks like. I don't show that very often. I went the wrong way. I think I was seeing myself. Right there. And it just ends right there. It doesn't show his... Uh, he had two brothers and one sister, and they're just gone, completely removed. Uh, very significant pieces, parts of uh, American history, though. And so, my claim is that this Richard Church at the top of that family tree line is right here, Wikipedia or whatever. Here's information about, uh, he was born David Henry Thoreau. I always have to reiterate that, because my first name's David. As far as anyone knows that I'm not named after him. And I think he was em embarrassed and ashamed of his name David, uh, you know, King David in the Old Testament, because uh, Israel had was not to be established until like 1948, like long, long after he was alive, over 100 years uh, after he was born. So, see, it says there's currently no text on this page. There used to be, there used to be like information about how he was one of the founders of uh, Massachusetts Bay Colony in like 1630. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna type in the search. No, I'm not. I'm not gonna. Well, let me search 1608. I'll just search those things. I highlight it. Now I'm gonna tap this. I could tap those options. Here's three buttons for options three buttons for options, or I can tap this right here, and I will. And it, it's going to immediately search that. See? Here's the same site. It says Familypedia right here, Familypedia right here, and here's the information that was there. Uh, Shoreditch, London, 
was there was a prohibition on theater and acting and plays. The idea is like uh, the theater of war is like a real thing. And, you know, wouldn't people rather be like a, a playwright? Like Shakespeare had uh, his first plays here in Shoreditch around that time. Um, then be an actor in the theater of war. Like who wants to be a th an actor in the theater of war? Uh, where bad actors, you know, lose their life and stuff. So, um, what else? So here's some information there about that. Um, see, he was a junior, and the senior was, uh, he never left England. He was born in 1570. So, in my opinion, he's the poor Richard from Poor Richard's Almanac. You know, there's stuff like Thomas Paine, Common Sense, um, different things like that. Uh, books like that, uh, that uh, led the Enlightenment era, founding of our country and stuff like that. Um, so, when I say our, I mean Italians. No, I'm just kidding. Um, um, what else? So, what else? So, instead of reading the transcript of the TV show, fast, like, whatever, and summarize it, um, because the lessons are important, the, whatever, there, there's no debating that, like, uh, stuff in the media, uh, stuff, stuff in the media both affects the world that we live in, and stuff in the world we live in affects stuff in the media, and especially social media, right, so, it's just, uh, periodic uh, camera engagement. Um, okay, so here's the invite that I sent out to um, Gematria Effect News uh, YouTube channel. Um, and the thing is that uh, also in my family tree, uh, there's a line of uh, Hubbards. And my grandfather, George Hubbard Campbell, uh, there's some information on Wikipedia. You know, he was a co-founder of a record company that uh, in Fort Worth and ma that made that uh, that very well-known song in the 90s. Um, it's called Last Kiss. And in the 60s, uh, you know, in the 90s it was Pearl Jam, but in the 1960s it was uh, the Cavaliers uh, band. And, uh, you know, my grandfather was a co-founder uh, of that record company. Uh, that information is on Wikipedia on someone else's page, actually, <coughs> Major uh, Bill Smith. And he he's a big uh, radio personality. Even though he had no radio show of his own, he used to call in. He started the whole trend of uh, Elvis Lives. He wrote a book and sort of trademarked the idea that Elvis Lives, uh, because those two words have the exact same letters, like either in reverse or just like switched around or whatever. Um, that's Major Bill uh, Smith, easy name to remember. Uh, on his Wikipedia page, it links to LeCam Records, that uh, my grandfather, George Hubbard uh, Campbell. It was half Campbell and half, uh, like, Major Bill Smith's wife's name or something like that. Anyways, uh, some stuff that happened in the 50s uh, was a lot more significant. Uh, hopefully I can talk about that sometime, involving uh, RCA uh, Record Company, taking someone's mixtape and turning it into, like, and using someone's mixtape to completely and gave it to someone else and kept all the proceedings and it was a very major case uh, involving uh, Ben Blue, a comedian, one of the first guys to have a variety show in the early 1950s before, um, long before Johnny Carson, long before uh, uh, Bob Hope even. He was like the first variety show guy on TV, uh, sued. Um, RCA and uh, someone who's associated with my grandpa, uh, songwriters, and uh, it's a long, long story. Um, he, ben Blue had a son named Tom Blue, and he has his own Wikipedia page on Magicpedia. He's a magician who just passed away last year. He was Canadian, and uh, I don't know. In my opinion, because he's Blue is like the person who, uh, you know, like the beginning of the video when I showed Chris Pyle and Gomer Pyle, sort of a similar thing. Um, 
Okay, so here's just an invite. Uh, my grandfather was like uh, uh, very elderly. Uh, I was one of his uh, last born grandchildren, if I'm not mistaken. I think I might be. Uh, and so we didn't have a whole lot of bonding stuff. Um, there definitely was uh, a lot of like bonding and everything. Like we used to go on a sailboat and stuff. Anyways, uh, we did go to see this movie here, Indian in the Cupboard. I do you remember doing that? Like in the early 90s. And so uh, Zach Hubbard, who runs uh, Chimatri Effect News, uh, I call him Indian in the Cupboard Hubbard. And a lot of people took offense to that yesterday. So I'm just apologizing today. Um, in my opinion, um, Amerigo Vespucci is the quote-unquote Indian in the cupboard. Uh, to talk about coding or whatever, the word America is code for Vespucci. Uh, Amerigo Vespucci, the Italian explorer associated with Columbus, who's never spoken about in uh, textbooks. They're both Italian. Um, and... And... Um, oh, so... America, the word, is code for Amerigo, Amerigo Vespucci's first name, and that's sort of uh, code for uh, half, like, the Mary part I've mentioned before, the Mary part in America and Amerigo is like Jesus' mother Mary, same as Mary in Maryland, um, <clears throat> stuff like that. Anyways, uh, if I had uh, restarted this video, I would have removed that invite. Uh, because Kwame Bound, Kwame, you, in the last couple of days, he, whatever, um, just uh, started to uh, send out the invite leaks for people to join on his live stream. And he has the, like, the largest uh, live streaming channel at least that's how it was like a few weeks ago. I don't know if um, his popularity is dwindling. Um, what else? Oh, this is uh, a disc in, uh, that I've been pasting around at uh, Quincy Jones. And I just updated it to... So, so when it says Quinn right there, that's Quincy Jones. Because uh, Kwame was talking about keeping up with the Joneses. And that is why I wrote this whole thing. Like, the two main uh, sources of this comment right here is uh, Tupac's song, Hand Em Up. But that song itself and Tupac's lyrics and quotes from that are itself quoting uh, Antonio Montana. In the 1980s, Oliver Stone you know, wrote the screenplay of the movie. Everyone knows this Scarface. And what I just uh, found an article yesterday on MSN News that said like 30 facts about this movie that a lot of people don't know. They talked about how the nickname of Al Capone himself was Scarface. And <clears throat> it was exactly 50 years after the first one when they made the second one in 1982. Uh, it was exactly 50 years after the 1932 release of the first movie Scarface about Al Capone and it's very different and yet very similar uh, in my opinion the second version of Scarface is um, the, originates from um, the original not the 1990s remake the original from like 1970 to uh, the Jackal and uh, even like the TV show Jackass and stuff, um, you know, that's where that, that title originates, in my opinion. Um, <coughs> of course, uh, Roger <coughs> from Tia and Tamara is uh, referring to the uh, TV show from the 90s, uh, Sister, Sister. Um, oh, yeah, right. So... Uh, Kwame was complaining about nobody wants to keep up with the Joneses. Everyone has that in common. You know, when one guy goes and does some massive thing, like Richard Branson just built a rocket and launched he and his crew into space. Come on, Richard Branson. How 
is anyone supposed to keep up with that? So that's the idea there. And then so I just was, I had to search, Google search, who's a famous Jones? Um, and that's Rashida Jones, daughter of Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones wrote the um, music uh, in 1968, I think, for the movie, The Italian Job, the original. Uh, Quincy Jones, very significant. Um, what else? Uh, this Tasmanian Devil thing. So, yeah, so it just so happened that yesterday I, um, I did like a, a Mickey Mouse voice. And I mentioned the Tasmanian Devil, the uh, Looney Tunes character. That's a really funny impression. I've never attempted that. It would be funny. Anyways, uh, that's what that's about. And it's just the way that people would say, like, Mickey Mouse voice. It would be the same way of, like, Rashida Jones voice. Or Rashida Jones look. Or whatever. And it's the same way... People say Joneses rather than just Jones. I don't know. That's just a personal note, I guess. Yeah. So, <clears throat> what what I'm seeing uh, after seeing Kwame Brown's live streams is that it's the same attitude uh, of someone uh, having a conversation with himself, looking in the mirror, like you know I'm sort of doing right now. I mean, not really. Uh, I'm looking at these words here. Um, uh, Kwame Brown looks just like Michael Jordan. Um, anyways, that's not important. What is important is uh, the reason that... Uh, my reasoning behind that was yesterday, I just found out that Flavor Flav has his own YouTube channel. And he, he uploaded an interview with Boosie, Lil Boosie, a uh, rapper. And I never noticed how much how similar they look until they they were talking about it and to hear them reverse back and forth i realized i'm looking at someone who, who's two people who are looking at th themselves in the mirror and this, hearing the inward thoughts that these two men have when they see themselves in the mirror they're thinking these things internally that they're saying out loud to each other <clears throat> most of the time, and, you know, in my opinion. And so Richard Sherman, um, yeah, I would refer to Todd Grande or whoever was in that video on my channel that I showed however many minutes ago. Uh, and the significance of my age, 33, and everyone else in my high school class should be around that age too, is, well, what is this miracle on 33rd Street though? That was... I don't know why I wrote that down. Um, it's just that one scene when they... Um, when all those letters addressed to St. Nicholas. Of course, you know, he was Italian. And from a certain part of Italy, he's like the patron saint of a particular part of Italy. Near where some... My great grandfathers were from, or something. Uh, I'm telling way too much. Anyway, so <clears throat> um, in this name, Goliath, uh, I, I saw that in the lyrics of "I Will Survive," uh, Gloria Gaynor song uh, from the 1970s. Everyone knows, uh, but there's one part of the song where she says, "Go on, no go. Walk out the door. Don't turn around now." You're not welcome anymore. And there's like the two words of go lie. Like stop standing up, just like lie down or whatever. Like take it easy, take a rest, cool off for a minute or something. Um, and that's what this is right here. Uh, so I think that's everything. I really think that I covered everything that's in this note here. A lot of these things were just emptied out my key, uh, clipboard. I think there's more stuff. There's more stuff from today on my clipboard. If I here's my clipboard right here. Oh, that was a picture of uh, someone on a news channel that I'd heard the name before. I'd never seen who it was, 
it was that that musician who plays guitar, Jack Johnson. Here's the original Jack Johnson. He's driving like a 1930s car in the 1930s. And what's funny about this music video is I want to see people's reaction to that. Just the thumbnail of that. I don't know why these music videos don't update regularly their thumbnails. Because I have to see the same uh, thumbnail or whatever. Here's what I uh, said in uh, Corner Brown's live chat today. Britney Spears is looking for legal <coughs> representative and... Kwame uh, could do that. Here's a quote from a uh, live chat uh, from a video I watched just before making this. That's uh, a Jeff Crow channel. Uh, so everyone's talking about uh, BAM in the live chat of Kwame uh, thing today. I had actually muted and I was just reading the, the chat um, <clears throat> because I had my volume booster on. It was like extremely loud. Um, so, <clears throat> what's, uh, what, <clears throat> pardon me, ahem, so, what, uh, no one talks about is how sports leagues sort of push and press their players to be, uh, better people, uh, and stuff like that, uh, it's the same with record companies, like, uh, Universal Records or Tommy Boy Records, you know, that's, uh, uh, BAM, that's what people are calling him. Uh, his full name's Africa Bambata, at least his stage name. Uh, he's part of Tommy Boy Record Company, and they also promote uh, House of Pain, Jump Around, <clears throat> one of the most uh, well, well-known and most played songs in the clubs that I've found. Um, <clears throat> okay, well, I definitely uh, need some water or something. It's, like, extremely hot. Uh, okay, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, I said, I'll send that invite to Bam Margera on Instagram. I really don't want to. I'd have to have someone else do that. I wouldn't even want to send that myself. Uh, so, because everyone was uh, chanting for Bam in the live chat today. So why not send this uh, Streamlabs video link for them to join, someone to join in. Uh, and why not, why couldn't that be Bam Margera instead? So... Um, I'm sure there's like tons of other things to say. I want to see if it shows. See, it says right here. Um, feels like 98, so it's like extremely hot. I need something to, uh, drink. Um, I don't know if I'll uh, dismiss these things. I'll dismiss, 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 dismiss. I mean, that phone number, you know. Uh, message me on Facebook or something. What, what's the problem? I don't, I don't know who your number is. So definitely check out uh, Todd Ground Day. Uh, my idea was to try to um, donate to Todd Ground Day like $100 to start pressing on people that are affecting my life inadvertently or intentionally. And that's not, I don't know, that's personal note. I don't know. Um, oh, and so like because I'm age 33 I'm sort of like in, I'm, I'm the uh, the ambassador in between young and old so like I'm the guy to reach out to to uh, like if young people want to talk to elders or if elders want to talk to the youth I'm the guy because I'm 33 right now so uh, I suppose uh, that's all for now re-engage the camera Make sure my hair looks okay. I guess it looks alright, so. Uh, alright, uh, video over.